Back when the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was first announced, there was a lot of speculation about the kind of remake that it would be. One thing that seemed to be highly requested was for some of the features that had been introduced to the series by the time of the original Crash 3 to be included in the remakes of Crash 1 and 2 in some way. And in the end, we did get a few of those additions. We had time trials added to Crash 1 and 2. We got a less annoying save system in the first game and the option to play as Coco in almost every level across the whole trilogy. Great, but you missed one Crash 3 gameplay element that would have been fun to unlock in the earlier games. I am of course referring to the superpowers that you get from beating each of the bosses in Crash 3, because many fans were hoping that there might be some way to use abilities like the Death Tornado Spin and the Fruit Bazooka in the first two games. Obviously, if that was an option, it might make those games a little less challenging, but would there really be any harm in letting you play with those powers once you'd reached 100% or maybe a reward for getting all the platinum relics so there's actually some incentive to attempt that? But no, those upgrades remain exclusive to Crash 3, even in the remakes, unless you start breaking the game. So yes, of course there's a way to get the Crash 3 powers working in the other games, through the magic of modding, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. This is something that I first demonstrated and attempted to explain over three years ago, and it was only last year that I was finally able to release a mod that would let you get the powers in Crash 1 and 2. I didn't promote that mod very widely, I only really mentioned it in a pretty boring guide for a modding tool that you'd probably only care about if you were already experimenting with the files in the game yourself. I'll provide some links and stuff for how to download the mod and use it if you want to try it, somewhere below. I will stress that it's not a very good mod, and that's part of the reason why I never made much of a fuss about it at the time, but I still get a surprising number of people asking me about this particular subject and whether it's possible and how to do it, so I thought it was about time that I revisited this topic and show you how this all works and why it's such a pain in the ass to do. Before I get into it, I just want to quickly acknowledge that yes, it's been a while since I did anything like this and yes, I did say I wasn't planning to do anything like this again until the level editor that I've been going on about forever has been released. So here is that acknowledgement. There you go, let's move on. So when the Ensign Trilogy came to PC and I started looking into modding it, getting the superpowers working in all three games was one of the first things I was curious about before I'd ever thought about custom levels or, or anything like that. But even after all this time and all the shit I've done with this game, a simple way to make it work still eludes me. The first indication I got that it might be possible to do this, I actually stumbled on by accident. One day, I was just playing a bit of Crash 1, minding my own business, when a poorly timed button press made me realise I could, for some reason, double jump. Double jumping is one of the Crash 3 superpowers, and it's supposed to only be available in that game, and I hadn't intentionally done anything to bring it into Crash 1. At that point, I still had no understanding of how the files worked or anything, so I was a little bit confused the first time it happened. What I had been doing was messing around with Cheat Engine, and after a while I figured out that's what had caused it and I was able to replicate it. Using Cheat Engine, I had found the part of the memory in the game that tells it which level to load next. If you're playing normally, you can see that value updating every time you go into a level through one of the hubs or whatever, but if you change that string to the path of some other level and then freeze it, the level you select in-game will be ignored and you'll be taken to the one you typed in instead. And because the Ensign Trilogy is a single compilation of the three remakes, rather than being three standalone games, you can change this to any level in the trilogy and it will load it once you exit the map you're currently on. So I've been trying to see if anything interesting would happen if you did something like load a Crash 1 level while you're playing Crash 3. And it's a simple matter of something interesting did happen, but I'm an idiot and it took me maybe a few days to notice it. But Here's what I now understand to have happened. I had loaded up Crash 3 as normal, playing on an existing save file, 
with autosave enabled. On that save file, I had already progressed at least up to the point where I had unlocked the double jump by defeating Dingo Dial. I then used that trick with Cheat Engine to hack my way into a Crash 1 level, but because I had never quit out of Crash 3 through the menus or anything, I was still playing on that Crash 3 save file and all of the progress from the save was carried over. With autosave enabled, your save file updates every time you enter a level, and I was now playing a Crash 1 level, so my progress was saved to the Crash 1 autosave slot, and all that save data from Crash 3 survived the transfer. So then, after I'd closed the game and come back to it again sometime in the future, the next time I pressed continue on Crash 1, it loaded up that save file again, and somewhere in the code for that file was the fact that I had unlocked the double jump, and that is why I was now able to double jump in Crash 1. And guess what? You can do exactly the same thing to make it work in Crash 2. And guess even more what? It's actually possible to convert PC save files into PS4 format, so you can even get the double jump working on an unmodified PS4, which is kind of cool, but it does require a few extra steps. But anyway, you might be thinking that this is surely the solution to getting all the superpowers in all three games, right? Surely if I use the same method to load a save file with all the powers unlocked into Crash 1, then that's job done and we can, we can all move on with our lives. But sadly not. It appears to have been some kind of development oversight, the fact that the double jump is functional in Crash 1 and 2, as long as it's unlocked. The double jump is the only power that this works with. Even if you dig into the actual game files and set all the superpowers to be enabled by default, which is a, a much easier way of achieving what I just described, it's still only the double jump that will work in the first two games. Well, discounting the fact that Crash 2 has a sprinting upgrade the same as Crash 3 anyway. You can still unlock that early by, by doing this, but yeah, even after three years, I still haven't figured out a way to get those other powers working without quite a lot of extra work. I'm sure there has to be some piece of code somewhere in the files for the game that controls all this, and if so, it should be possible to find because I imagine there would be a value for the double jump that's set differently to all the other superpowers. But if that code does exist, I don't know where it is. So I'm sort of just going to show you the way that I managed to get everything else working, which is not necessarily the best possible way to do it. So it's time to peel back a few more layers of the game and start picking apart how the levels actually work. There's an archive in the files for the game called Chunk Infos, which I've talked about once or twice before. Inside this thing is a folder for each of the levels in the game, as in all three games, because it's all one game. Most of these files are language files, which you can modify to change the names of levels and the loading screen hints, but what's relevant for this is the IGZ file for each level. There's a few things that these zone info files control, like which characters you're allowed to play as in that level. They also tell the game whether to treat this as a Crash 1, 2 or 3 level. If you look inside the C zone info section for a Crash 1 level, you'll see a couple of 7s down here. For Crash 2, it's 8s and then it's 9s with Crash 3 levels. If you're wondering why they used 7, 8 and 9, it appears to be based on this list of game modes that can be found in the executable. Starting from 0, that puts the three Crash games at positions 7, 8 and 9 in the list. I don't know if number 6 was just like a prototype Insane Trilogy, or if it's referring to some unreleased Skylanders game, and I don't care. I think if you change the number to anything other than 7, 8 or 9, it will just default to Crash 1 mode. But what does changing it to one of the numbers that actually means something do? Well, this is the file for Nsanity Beach, the first level in Crash 1. If I change this 7 to an 8, when I play the level, I am now able to do stuff like crouch and crawl and slide and body slam none of which you're supposed to be able to do in Crash 1 levels. And if you pause the game, you get the Crash 2 style menu. And if you quit the level, you end up at the Crash 2 warp room, which is a whole other thing that I'm, I'm not going to worry about for now. But I should probably say, if you're curious at all about messing with this stuff for yourself, if you care about your save files, you should back them up somewhere because, well, as you heard from my tale of accidentally double jumping in Crash 1, once you start swapping between games, it can really 
fuck up your save data. That's why the file I'm normally playing on looks like this. But anyway, if changing this to the code for Crash 2 lets you use Crash 2 moves in this level, shouldn't it be as simple as changing this to a 9 so it will run in Crash 3 mode? Well, yes. If you change it to a 9, any superpowers you have unlocked will work. I can do a, a super body slam. I can shoot this crab with the bazooka and then sprint away and then celebrate with a death tornado. So that's it, we're done. I mean, we're done if this is the only level you want to use the superpowers in. If you try the same thing in the next level, Jungle Rollers, you'll get a slightly different result. You can see that this is using Crash 3 mode and I do have all the powers unlocked, but I don't appear to have Crash Bandicoot unlocked. Where, where is he? Does he appear if you try Crash 2 mode instead? Yes, he does. And the way that he appears gives you a clue to what the problem might be here. For most Crash 1 levels, when you first spawn in, you'll just sort of appear with a few sparks. In Crash 2, you have this blue warping effect that's really just a fancier version of the same thing. In Crash 3, you enter and exit most levels via these giant bubbles because... And these bubbles are a bit more complicated than the other types of spawning. With Crash 1 and 2, the spawn animation is just an animation with some particle effects. In Crash 3 levels, the bubble is actually a separate object that appears as part of a cutscene in the level, which also controls when the player character appears. If you disable that cutscene in a Crash 3 level, you won't spawn. And if you tell the game to treat, let's say, Jungle Rollers as if it's a Crash 3 level, you won't spawn for the same reason. The initial workaround that I had for this problem that I used for my full playthroughs of Crash 1 and 2 with the superpowers that you might have seen was after the level loaded, I just teleported Crash outside the bounds of the level so that he immediately died and then respawned at the normal starting point again using Cheat Engine. I think there was a moment during one of those playthroughs, uh, I forget which, when I got a game over because I was killing myself and losing a life at the start of every level so I could spawn properly and I wasn't really keeping track of that. But wait, no, shut up a minute, hang on. Why did I spawn completely fine when I set Insanity Beach to Crash 3 mode? Well, at the start of that level, you see Crash washing up on the beach. You don't spawn in the way you normally do with the sparkly warping effect. That beach animation and the accompanying camera movement is also a cutscene, sort of similar to the ones used in Crash 3. And because that cutscene tells the game to play Crash's beach animation when the level starts, if there's something preventing you from spawning in the normal way, the cutscene will force you to spawn anyway. If you tested every level in Crash 1, you would discover that Cortex Power also works fine for the same reason, because that level also opens with a short cutscene that actually reuses the beach animation, except you only catch the very end of it normally. And it is specifically the cutscene that fixes the problem. There's nothing in the zone info or any other kind of metadata for these levels that says this level starts in a special way. In both Insanity Beach and Cortex Power, the opening cutscene is just an entity that has been placed in the level, like any of the crates or enemies or trees or whatever. And it's even possible to spawn in extra copies of that cutscene later on, and it'll just replay it wherever you currently are. But that's the kind of thing I want to talk about more next time. The point is, because it's just a thing in the level, like any other entity, it can be loaded into other levels in exactly the same way that I added loads of penguins and seals into future tents in order to turn it into arctic antics. It, it's the same principle. And that is how the superpowers mod that I released last year works. I modified every level in Crash 1 and 2 where the spawning issue occurred and loaded the intro cutscene from Cortex Power into each one. And I, I wrote a bit of code to do that automatically. It would have taken forever to manually do it for every level. You don't get the same camera movement that you see in Cortex Power when you play that mod because I disabled all of the cameras controlled by the cutscene and the beach animation doesn't play in every single level because I changed it to the normal spawn animation. But if you've tried that mod then every time you've started a level it's played that intro cutscene from Cortex Power 
it's just been disguised as a normal level spawn. But that's also why the game crashes when you finish a level. It was very much a bodge and I haven't had chance to make it any neater yet. If you take a look at the files contained in that mod, you can see there's a lot of shit from Cortex Power that's not involved with the cutscene. But it's more effort to remove all of that stuff and have the level still load properly. That's kind of one of the last big things that still needs fixing with the level editor, but I'm working on it, I promise. I used Cortex Power instead of Insanity Beach, by the way, just because the file I'd need from Insanity Beach would mean even more extra crap included in the mod that doesn't actually do anything, so Cortex Power is a little bit more efficient. But anyway, there's a question you may have if you happen to have looked into some of the level files before or if you've just been paying attention. If it's possible to copy this cutscene into any level you want, why can't you instead just do the same thing to add the missing time bubble cutscene into the levels that don't have them? And in theory, that would be easier. There are a few levels in Crash 3 that use a separate map file that contains nothing except the opening cutscene, so you wouldn't have loads of extra stuff you need to remove, like these massive factory doors. However, travelling through time appears to throw your spatial accuracy off a little bit, which does make sense if you think about it, but let me show you what I mean. This is the Great Gate, and this is normal Crash 1 unmodified The Great Gate in Crash 1 mode. And where I'm standing here is the spawn point for the level. This is where you're supposed to be when the level starts. If I use the same method I used for the Cortex Power cutscene to load in the time bubble from Tomb Time, which is one of those Crash 3 levels that has a file just for the time bubble and nothing else, this is where you spawn. Even if you modify the cutscene to skip all the cameras and spit you out straight away instead of waiting for all the animations, you don't spawn exactly at the normal starting position. In some levels, that might not be a problem, but with the Great Gate, there's an invisible wall right here to stop you from falling off the edge of the level, which, if I zoom out a bit, is right here. And you will respawn in the correct spot if you do fall to your death, but that's not really ideal. To fix that problem, you would have to manually check and then modify every single level individually to make sure you actually appear in the right spot in all of them. I'm not going to do all that when the Cortex Power option exists. And the Time Bubble version doesn't solve the issue with crashing at the end of the level anyway, so I don't think it's worth the effort. Maybe in the future, once I've sorted that issue with custom levels loading in more files than they need, I'll have a less buggy superpower mod, but what would be much nicer is if someone could finally figure out how to do this properly and find something like a list of abilities you can use in each game that's really easy to change. Because even without this ridiculous workaround for fixing the broken spawns, changing the game mode like this causes a ton of other problems. Like what I mentioned about levels in Crash 2 mode always taking you back to the warp room, it's the same thing when they're in Crash 3 mode, you'll be kicked out to the time twister if you exit the level. It is possible to fix all that, but then that just creates another set of problems in another part of the game, like the fact that none of the bonus rounds work in Crash 1 if you're not in Crash 1 mode. So yeah, a different solution would be nicer. At this point it seems unlikely I'm ever going to manage it, but you know what? Apart from focusing on the level editor, one of the reasons why I stopped doing this Ard Breaks Crash thing was because so much of what I've said about these games in the past has turned out to be bollocks. There's a lot of things that I said probably weren't possible that I later found a way to do, so maybe this will turn out the same way as Can you play as Court? No! I already told you, please stop asking me. Later.